Hi, a very good afternoon to all of you online. I am Dr. Ng. I am one of the orthopedic surgeons at Island Hospital. Welcome to Facebook Live Island Hospital. This afternoon, I would like to share with you about knee pain, in particularly uh, osteoarthritis of the knee. Okay, knee pains uh, is actually a very common complaint among my patients. It affects all ages of patients, uh, whether you are old, you are young, but uh, overall, we are seeing more of the elderly patients who complain of this problem than the younger patients. Studies have shown that uh, for those over 60 years old, one in four persons will experience some sort of uh, knee pain at their life. This knee pain sometimes can be annoying and affecting the activities of our daily living, such as uh, climbing stairs, uh, walking, or even sometimes squatting down. So what are the symptoms of knee problems? Commonly seen are uh, pain. So as I mentioned before, pain uh, while walking upstairs, downstairs, uh, pain when squatting down, and sometimes uh, even pain on prolonged walking. Say you walk for after half an hour, the pain started to be painful. Swelling is another sign of uh, a knee problem. Some people, they complain of uh, knee swelling after some strenuous exercises, after uh, a game of badminton, or sometimes after uh, went for uh, hiking or something. Weakness is more uh, seen, especially in people who squat down and having difficulty to stand up again. So you used to be able to stand up uh, with, without any problem. But recently, probably you feel that you need to hold on to something, you need to push on something before you can actually stand up. So that's what I mean by weakness of the knee. Instability is uh, usually caused by uh, ligament injury. And what you are feeling is, uh, say, your knee is not supporting yourself. Your, you feel like your knee is giving way. And you have that sensation of a uh, knee wants to dislocate out from the socket. That's what they call instability. Clicking. Clicking is commonly uh, uh, seen even in young people. When they climb stairs, they go upstairs, walk downstairs, and they feel like there's some sound in their knee. And sometimes when they squat down and when they, when they want to stand up and they feel some clicking sound. Some is very soft, but sometimes it can be even heard by other people just beside them. Inability to fully straighten or bend your knee, sometimes this is happens when you walk and uh, you feel like your knee get locked. You cannot bend fully, you cannot uh, straighten up. Uh, it feels like the, it gets stuck. Then you have to move a little bit, twist a little bit, then you can move again. So what are the common causes of knee pain? Uh, fall, you have a sprain, uh, that's uh, self-explanatory. Sports injuries, after, uh, probably during a game of badminton, you twist uh, your knee or even a normal morning walk. So uh, these are the more common causes for knee pain. But sometimes, even without injury, some uh, conditions like osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or even gout can cause knee pain as well. But uh, they present it differently. I'll come into that. Okay, just talk about the anatomy or the, the structure of our knee. Okay, I bring a knee model for you. Okay, uh, can you see that? Yep. Okay, at the front here, there's our knee tag. Then when we move our knee, we have ligaments to hold our knees together. And in between the knees, let's go down. In between the knee, we have a layer of soft bone that we call meniscus. And at the end of the bone here, we have a layer of cartilage. And at the top of the bone, at the bottom, we have a layer of cartilage as well. So this cartilage actually acts like a cushion or absorber to protect the joints. 
So what are the causes for osteoarthritis of the knee? So what's osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is actually a, a wear and tear condition or what we call it a degenerative condition. So age is the main factor for osteoarthritis. The more we walk, the more we have our daily activities by the age of say 40, 50 years old, osteoarthritis will set in. This is because of wear and tear. I usually uh, resemble this condition to a, a tire, a car tire. So a new tire has a nice uh, pattern on it, but as you use the car, as you run over 50,000 kilometers, 100,000 kilometers, there are meant to be some wear and tear over the tires. So the same thing to our knee as well. So when we walk after so many years, 40, 50 years, our cartilage will thin off. There will be wear and tear at the cartilage. So this thinning of the cartilage is the cause for the osteoarthritis and it causes inflammation around the knee joint. Another cause of osteoarthritis is an uh, injury to our joint. Be it a direct injury, say uh, in a car accident, you have a fall, there's a direct impact on the knee and the cartilage that in damage or get thin up. So that uh, can cause osteoarthritis in later uh, uh, in the life. Overuse, be it in work, say uh, your work probably require you to uh, walk for a prolonged period of time or your work uh, requires you to squat down or kneel down for a long period of time these are all the precipitator factors for osteoarthritis and uh, those who uh, play sports a lot say they run marathon they climb hills extreme sports for overuse of your joint the wear and tear rate will be higher and therefore the degeneration of the cartilage will be faster than those who will use it just for normal activity. Body weight. Definitely the heavier the body, the heavier our weight, there will be higher load on the knee joint itself. So the higher weight or higher load on the cartilage will cause the cartilage to wear off faster or earlier. And osteoarthritis has been found to have some genetic cause as well. So uh, let's say your parents uh, have osteoarthritis in early age, more likely the children may have some degree of arthritis at earlier age than normal population as well. Okay, for stages of arthritis, we uh, define according to the extensiveness of the wear and tear in the cartilage. So let's say, okay, in the, okay, you can see this, a normal cartilage is smooth and when we move, it glides easily. Whereas usually by the time we reach, say, uh, age 40 years old, there will be some damage or some uh, wear and tear to the cartilage. This is the early stage. And usually the symptoms is like uh, clicking or some difficulties standing up after we squat. The next stage is what we call a moderate stage. So there will be more extensive uh, damage to the cartilage compared to early stage. And the more severe form, of course, uh, okay, you can see even some bone spurs getting around at the edge of the bones and the joint as well, and there will be more extensive damage. So, usually from one stage to another, it takes years, some 5 years or 10 years or even 15 years. It depends on the activities that we do and depends on how we take care of our, uh, our joints. So, what are the symptoms of arthritis? Usually, from uh, 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 early stage, it can be just clicking uh, stairs, but as it gets worse, it will be like, say, painful when you stand up from sitting position or while climbing stairs, or some even 
while normal walking on flat ground, you have, have knee pain after walking for say 30 minutes, 40 minutes or one hour. These are all the early symptoms of osteoarthritis. Some they have uh, uh, swollen knees after the activities and a more severe case, they can't even squat down because of the limited movement of their knees. In the more severe form, we can even see deformity of the knee from outside. Say, if you look at the image over your left hand side, this is what we call a bow knee. It looks like an O shape of the knee, of the legs. So this happens usually in the late stage of osteoarthritis. I'm sure most of you have seen uh, some elderly person walking like this on the street. Another form of deformity is actually opposite of bow knee, where we call it a knock knee, where both knees come closer to each other and it forms an X shape of the legs. These are all late stage uh, of osteoarthritis. If you look at the x-ray, okay, the x-ray on your left is a normal uh, looking x-ray. There will be a space in between the bones and this space actually represents the thickness of our cartilage. We can't see cartilage from the x-ray. The x-ray only shows up the bones. But we know this black space here is actually the space for our cartilage. However, in the osteoarthritis patient, if you do an x-ray, this space will be re reduced or get narrowed. Just like the x-ray you see on your right, there will be reduced joint space over here. And that's explain why you have pain when you walk in osteoarthritis patient. Because the cushion or the cartilage in between the bones has thinned out. And some, of course, we can see bone spurs which are protruded out from the bone. Okay, how do we take care of our, our knees? We can do physiotherapy to strengthen the muscles. We can do physiotherapy to, uh, to do some stretching of the muscles around the knees. Which management? Of course, in the obese patient, if you are able to reduce your body weight, you will reduce the load on the knee as well and therefore can reduce pain on the knee during activities. Okay, knee brace. Knee brace is something that uh, you wear uh, during your activities, when, especially when you go for sports. By wearing knee brace, you can actually stabilize your knee and reduce uh, the friction in between. However, for knee brace, it doesn't change uh, the damage that has been done inside your knee but you definitely feel better by wearing a knee during your activities okay activity modifications what i mean by that is we avoid those activities that can cause more harm to our cartilage in our knee so for example normal walking usually uh the load on our knee is two times our body weight. So every time when you walk, there will be an impact or a load into our knee joint. Say you are 50 kilos, and every time you walk, you actually exert 100 kilos of load over your knee joint. But when you walk upstairs and downstairs, the impact or the load on our knee joint increase to about three to four times of our body weight, especially coming down from the stairs. And worse, if you kneel down or when you squat, the load or the impact on our knee joint is actually five to six times of our body weight. So by knowing that, if you can avoid squatting or kneeling down, you can reduce the friction or the load on our cartilage of our knees. So this is what I mean by activities modification. We try to avoid uh, kneeling, we try to avoid squatting down. It's not that we do not squat at all, but if, if, if possible, we reduce the time. And stairs, of course, some people will say, oh, I have stairs at home. 
uh, yes, uh, you can go step upstairs, downstairs, but we try to reduce the frequency. Say, let's say, rather than climb upstairs, downstairs uh, 10 times a day, you reduce to two to three times a day to reduce damage to the knee joint. Okay, when we come to treatments, there are so many uh, modalities available in the market at the moment. It depends on the severity of uh, or the stages of osteoarthritis. So if uh, there's, uh, the joint is painful, sometimes the doctors will offer you some painkiller or analgesia. And muscle relaxation definitely will help uh, to certain extents. The osteoarthritis is actually also a, an inflammatory condition of our knee joint. So anti-inflammatory medication can help reduce the inflammation and therefore reduce the pain that you're feeling. And talking about supplements, there are so many supplements in the market. When you walk into the pharmacies, uh, uh, there are so many types of different uh, types of uh, supplements available for knee health. So most common uh, supplements are actually glucosamine and chondroitin. Those medicine has been, or those supplements has been in the market for many, many years. And uh, fish oils is also not new, especially omega-3. And there are, of course, uh, some other types like uh, creole oil, uh, uh, proteoglycans, uh, uh, more uh, uh, newer in the markets, and some other, uh, some MSM. There are so many, uh, you can name it. Okay, uh, if those conservative managements uh, don't help, then we probably have to go to another stage, which is what we call intra-articular injection or injection into your knee joint. There are two types of medication that we can give to this injection. The first one is hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is actually an ingredient of our cartilage. The purpose of this injection is actually to lubricate the knee joint so that to reduce friction when we walk, when we move our knees. This hyaluronic acid also uh, it nourish, nourishes our cartilage so that it makes the cartilage stronger and healthier. By increasing the strength of the cartilage, we hope that our cartilage can last longer and slow down the wear and tear rate of the knee. Hyaluronic acid is actually uh, is a liquid, but it comes the gel form. It's quite thick liquid. So it acts like a shock absorber. So when you walk, it actually it absorbs some of the impact in our knees. The second uh, medication that we can give is actually a corticosteroid injection. Uh, steroid is actually a very good anti-inflammatory agent. As I said before, osteoarthritis is also an inflammatory uh, reaction. So if you can give some steroid into the knee, it will definitely reduce the inflammation and therefore relieve the pain that uh, you are experiencing. Okay, before, I, before the surgery, I would like to uh, say that our cartilage is actually, uh, it will not heal. Any damage done to the cartilage, it will not heal up like uh, any wound in our skin because for our cartilage, there's no blood supply to the cartilage. So any wear and tear, it will only get worse with time. So at one stage, the condition will get serious and not relieved by medication, not relieved by painkiller or even the injection that I mentioned before. Then we probably have to resort to uh, surgery. And the best surgery that we can do for osteoarthritis is knee replacement surgery. By that, I mean we re actually replace the damaged cartilage. If you look at the photos on your left, it, there's a, it shows damaged cartilage at the end of the bone. So by doing the surgery, we are actually taking off this layer of cartilage and replace it with a metal piece both at the upper end and the lower end of the bone. 
So a closer look to what is a total knee replacement, it actually has three components. The first one will be the metal piece on the thigh bone and another metal piece at the shin bone and another polyethylene or plastic-like component in between these two metals so that when we glide, it will be natural and it resembles the original structures of uh, the knee joint. Okay, this is the x-ray of a, per a person who has done a total knee replacement. So you can see the metal piece over here and down at the shin bone from the front. And from the side, you can see actually this metal is curved in shape so that you can actually bend your knee uh, as natural as possible. Okay, uh, by doing surgery, we can also able to correct any deformity or alignment of the knee. So for example, in this patient, the knee is bent to almost 20 to 30 degrees. But after the surgery, we can actually make it straight. And uh, by restoring the alignment of the knee, uh, the patient will be able to walk without much pain. Okay, those are the benefits of knee replacement surgery. So first of all, uh, it relieves the pain so that you can walk further rather than be restricted by the pain and won't be able to do your normal chores. It restores the movement. Some uh, severe cases where it's difficult to squat or difficult to bend the knee, after the surgery, the patient will be able to bend more and have a more freedom in the range of movement. It increases the knee strength after the surgery and it restores the normal alignment, as I mentioned before. So all in all, after the knee replacement surgery, there will be improved quality of life so that you can go traveling, you can go visit your friend without much pain. Okay, I think that's about all of my talk and presentation for this afternoon. Okay, if, is there any questions? You can post it online and I'll try to answer for you. Okay, uh, we have received some questions beforehand and uh, I would like to present it as a slide form and answer those questions. So the first question is, what kind of injuries can cause knee pain? So any sports injury, uh, like you twisted your knee, it can cause a ligament injury. Uh, if you have ligament injury, it may cause instability of your knee joint. For example, if I were to show you this model again, okay, ligaments actually holds the knee joint together so that we can move. Yeah, but if you have ligament injury, uh, your knee may not uh, able to move only in one direction, but it will twist a little bit. It will twist a little bit when you walk. So by this instability, there will be more friction when you walk. And more friction means more wear and tear to the cartilage. Another question is, uh, mm -hmm. the, the person asked, do glucosamine and chondroitin supplements actually work? Okay, very good questions. This issue is very controversial. Some doctors believe in it but some don't. So uh, to me, we know that the cartilage will not regrow. It will not grow back if there's a, a wear and tear reduction of the thickness by two, three millimeters. No matter what you do, what no matter what supplements that you take, it will not grow back. But what, uh, what glucosamine and chondroitin do, they are actually it increase the strength of the cartilage and in, improve the healthiness of your cartilage so that it slow down the wear and tear process. So in long run, it actually slow down the whole process of osteoarthritis so that hopefully you don't have to go to uh, the, the severe stage and you can avoid surgery. That's the aim of uh, the supplements. But to say that it, increase or increase the thickness of the cartilage 
No, I don't think so. Okay, we have one question online by Zhong Zhen. Uh, leg pain. What are the causes for leg pains? Not knee. So uh, it depends on which part of the leg. Uh, if you have pain for the whole of your leg, from I mean from the hip down to the knee and to the ankle, is less likely to be due to knee pain. Knee pain is knee pain is actually uh, most likely just confined to the knee area, and usually is only aggravated by activities. If you have pain around your leg, even when you sit down, even you are lying on the bed, the chances are is less likely to be due to knee problem, but maybe other problems. Uh, it can be spine problem sometimes because the nerve of our knee actually originates from the spine. So an impinged nerve at the spine can actually cause pain to the leg. So uh, I think the best is to get a doctor to check out and see because the knee pain uh, less likely to cause the pain throughout the whole length of, the, of our leg. Okay, another question by Ahmad Zudi. What dosage for glucosamine? Okay, uh, for glucosamine, a lot of people, they are worried about the side effect. Uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, can glucosamine cause uh, diabetes? So uh, if you stick to the appropriate dosage, so for the, uh, what is appropriate dosage? For initial treatment, you probably need to take 1,500 uh, milligram of glucosamine per day. Once your symptoms get better, you may reduce it to 1,000 milligram per day. So, uh, 1,000 milligram per day of glucosamine is safe, and usually it doesn't cause any side effect at all. So, even diabetes patient, I will put them on glucosamine, but not overdose. So, 1,000 milligram of glucosamine per day uh, is the usual dosage. Um, Mr. T. Witan, what is the cause involved? Uh, what are the risks for this surgery? Okay, uh, I, I think you are talking about total knee replacement. So the cost of total knee replacement varies, depends on what system we use, what brand, and uh, the days of the hospitalization. So usually for a normal uh, case, the patient will be in the hospital, say about four to five days. Uh, the cost will range from probably uh, 22,000 to 24,000. So it depends. It's not, we are not offering a package at the moment because uh, everyone, the needs are different. Uh, sometimes uh, extra painkillers, things like that. Uh, so the estimated cost is around 20 to 24,000 ringgit. And what are the risks for this surgery? Usually, uh, the surgery can be done under spinal anesthesia, means half body anesthesia. And it's, the surgery is quite safe. It's not life threatening, but usually before the, any surgery, we will do a medical checkup for the patient and make sure the patient is healthy, uh, no heart problem, and is healthy to go through an anesthesia and a surgery. Usually the blood loss will be minimum and the patient will be able to walk the uh, day one or day two after the surgery itself. Uh, Amy Chin, I have water retention on my right knee when I walk too much. It was very painful on the knee and I also can't straighten my knee. Water retention. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether you're, you're talking about water retention around the knee or just on the leg and the ankle, which are more common. Usually any water retention, it will not be in the knee joint itself because uh, knee joint is usually due, knee joint swelling or the fluid in the knee joint is usually because of injury or because of overuse, but less likely because of water retention. Uh, so um, if the swelling is around the knee, we can actually put a needle in and aspirate the, uh, the fluid out. And the effect is very immediate and you have pain relief very immediate as well. So it's a simple procedure that uh, we do it even in our clinic. 
So uh, I will encourage you to approach a doctor to get this sort of, is it uh, actually water retention or just some fluid in the knee itself? Uh, Miss Jocelyn. Okay, uh, whether to do squatting or not, as I say, squatting actually increase load to our knee joint. Full squat is definitely not encouraged. But half squat, say uh, you bend your knee until 90 degrees, that's uh, acceptable and is a good strengthening exercise for the muscles around the knee. But not a full squat. A full squat can actually do more harm to the uh, knee joint. Uh, Mr. James Lee, uh, he asked, if the pain is at the back of the knee, is it caused by osteoporosis? Okay, um, osteoporosis is actually a different condition to osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is the wear and tear of our knee joint. And uh, osteoporosis is actually uh, a bone condition where the bone is, uh, the strength of the bone is reduced or what we call the density of the bone has reduced. So osteoporosis, the re reduced density of our bone, usually is painless. So any pain in the back of the, uh, the back or the spine is less likely to be osteoporosis, but, but osteoporosis can cause what we call a uh, fracture to our spine. That can cause pain to the spine. So uh, osteoporosis, usually we will say osteoporosis is asymptomatic, but the consequences of osteoporosis, say for example, a fracture can be painful. So a fractured spine can be painful, but osteoporotic bone usually is asymptomatic. Uh, Stella, I have arthritis right knee. I'm not able to straighten my knee and there's pulling sensation if I do. Okay, the pulling sensation, is it at the back of your knee? If it's actually uh, the back of your knee, it can be due to the muscle problem as well. So uh, osteoarthritis is usually painful when you walk, when you squat down, when you climb stairs. But if you sit still, when you lie down, usually it's quite painless. But if you do have some pulling sensation, even when you're not doing any activity, it may not be due to osteoarthritis of the knee and it uh, probably uh, a spine condition or some muscle condition as well. So uh, pulling sensation uh, less likely to be an osteoarthritis condition. But in severe osteoarthritis where your alignment uh, is out, you may have some imbalances of the muscle pulling. So sometimes you can may have pulling of the muscles uh, due to osteoarthritis in the severe case. What is the frequency of hiking advisable? Okay, uh, <laughs> hiking is actually uh, not so advisable because if you hike up, you need to hike down. So uh, going down is actually uh, can be harmful to your knees because of the impact when you go down. So uh, hiking is not advisable. So if possible, just walk on the flat ground. So how many times advisable a week? Uh, I would say, if possible, avoid hiking. So, um, last time I checked my spine, there's not any problem. So I don't know whether my leg, why my leg can be. Okay, depends on what uh, modality or what investigation the doctor has done for your spine. The best investigation that you can do for your spine is actually an MRI scan where we can see not only your bones, but also the nerve and the cartilage in between the bone. So a slip disc may be missed if you just uh, do an ex normal x-ray. The doctor will say, oh, uh, the x-ray looks normal, look, looks fine, you have no problem, but you still do have some pain in your leg. So uh, the best modalities for spine or back pain is actually an MRI scan. Will curcumin or any supplement help anti-inflammatory recommended for osteoarthritis? Yeah, okay, uh, curcumin is another type of supplement and is uh, good to reduce uh, inflammation. So in some degrees, it will reduce the pain of osteoarthritis as well. 
So uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no problem. You can try it. So, and uh, some people they ask, oh, what are the diets which are beneficial for the knees? Okay, uh, there's no uh, obvious or significant uh, benefit, but overall, if you take some antioxidant, say vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, it will reduce the inflammation as well. Uh, diets that contain uh, high omega 3s, like say fish oil, like sardines, tuna, salmon, it may have some uh, some degree of benefits. Okay, uh, there's another question submitted online. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my leg gets stuck in a certain position and I can't bend it. What could be the cause? Okay, this is, uh, as I mentioned, sometimes this condition is what we call locking. It means your knee is locked and you the movement is uh, stuck. It can be due to some cartilage damage on the surface of your knee where it restricts the movement or it can be due to a meniscus tear that uh, obstructs the movement of your knee joint. So in order to find out, you need probably a, a MRI scan to further investigate what is the cause of that. Okay, another uh, online question by Amy. Uh, my doctor advised me before and on before on extracting the fluid, but he said it will occur back. Oh, okay, yes, uh, regarding the fluid in the joint just now. So, yes, uh, if the cause of this fluid retention is due to injury, of course, it may not come back. But if the cause is due to osteoarthritis, then by extracting the knee fluid, it may recur if the activity is uh, uh, extra means that if you go for extra walk, walking walk for a prolonged period of time, uh, squatting down, then the fluid may slowly uh, increase again. So the, the treatment for it is actually to treat the osteoarthritis and not only just to uh, extract the fluid in the joint. So we need to know the stages, which stage of your osteoarthritis is and what are the appropriate treatment for that. So. Uh, okay, another question by AJ Koo. Any good exercise for knee health? Okay, uh, I do not have a slide, but okay. Um, any movement around the knee to strengthen the muscle around the knee actually help to stabilize our knee movement. If you can stabilize the movement of our knee, you can actually reduce the friction. Just like wearing a knee brace, it helps to stabilize uh, our knee joint. So if you can do some exercises uh, to strengthen the muscle around our knees it may help and uh, some stretching exercises as well it, it relaxes the knee and do some stretching to help the muscles around the knee it definitely will help uh, but again osteoarthritis is a wear and tear condition we cannot prevent wear and tear unfortunately so with age uh, with time there will uh, some there will be some wear and tear in progress. So, uh, but if you can do some exercises, that will be good. Okay, why does my knee make sounds when I bend it? Okay, uh, this is a very common uh, complaint even in the younger patient. Sometimes when they walk upstairs, they walk downstairs. There's some creaking in the sound uh, in the in the knee. So. The more common one, of course, is the surface of the cartilage has uh, some degrees of wear and tear. Meaning that when you move, okay, again, the, the when you move, the back of the kneecap is actually touching the knee. So, when we do this, if the surface is smooth, there will be no, 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 no sound at all. But sometimes, there will be some wear and tear just at the back of the kneecap here or at the front of the cartilage here so when you move there will be some unevenness just like our car when we go through when we drive our car and go through some harm or some pothole there will be uh, some uh, vibration so the same thing to our knees when you move if the surface is not smooth then there will be some clicking sound 
So if you feel there's some squeaky sound in your knee, there may be an indication that there's some early onset of arthritis. What are my non-surgical options before considering uh, joint replacement? Yeah, uh, of course, if your symptom is not that bad, uh, a joint replacement is uh, not advisable at, uh, yet. So we usually try some conservative management like uh, taking medication, taking supplements, uh, injection like I mentioned before, uh, better a uh, hyaluronic acid injection, or sometimes uh, corticosteroid injection, and physiotherapy, things like that. Unless the pain is severe and it affects your daily activity, then uh, surgery is recommended. So. Uh, knee replacement surgery is actually reserved for those in late stage. What activities range can be expected after the knee surgical procedure? Yes, um, this is a very common question asked. Uh, after the surgery, can I go back to my normal activity? Can I squat? Okay, uh, knee replacement surgery has been uh, for 20 to 30 years at least. So there's a lot of improvement and advancement uh, throughout these years. So for the current uh, knee surgery, we are actually using the, the latest uh, model or the latest design. So if you can see on the next slides that I have prepared, after the knee surgery, you can actually even squat down and kneel down. That's the design so that you can have full range of movement. However, uh, squatting and kneeling is again not advisable even after the knee replacement surgery. Because by squatting down and kneeling down, even after the knee replacement surgery, it exert extra impacts on the, the, the metals. And that knee replacement device can get damaged and get loosened. So the knee replacement surgery, uh, it, Usually, it's definite for uh, elderly people so that it can last long. However, if you don't take care well, it may not last as long as what we want it to be. So if possible, we try to avoid those activities like squatting and kneeling. Okay, another question online now uh, by Miao King. Is there any food that could trigger or worsen OA? Okay, um, food that can trigger OA actually uh, I would say no. Uh, a lot of people say, okay, uh, try to avoid uh, food like nuts and uh, probably some, can you say, cold stuff that can trigger arthritis. Actually, uh, for us, we don't think so. So uh, there's no restriction on any food that you can take. But of course, some food can cause gout. And gout is another uh, condition that causes knee pain, but it's different from osteoarthritis. So for gout, there are certain food that you should avoid. Okay, I'm in my 30s and I love to run and hike. Will this put me at higher risk of arthritis due to my activity? Oh, unfortunately, the answer is yes, because uh, hiking, uh, as I said, uh, is not good for the knees because uh, you go up here, downhill, which, which put more uh, stress on the knee joint. And increased stress, increased load to the knee joint will cause the wear and tear to set in faster and earlier. So, uh, of course, uh, you are at higher risk if you do any strenuous activities. Is age a consideration for joint replacement? Yes. As I said, uh, a joint replacement, there's a lifespan, usually 15 to 20 years. So the younger you do the surgery, there's uh, always uh, 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 one day probably the knee will uh, get painful again because uh, the failure of the, the knee joint after the surgery. There will be loosening of the, uh, after the knee replacement and the pain will set back again. So usually, if you want to do knee surgery, we will advise if you can wait until, say, after 55 years old or 60 years old, uh, so that you don't have to have another revision of the surgery done. 
is physiotherapy the best way to reduce knee pain? Uh, I wouldn't say this is the best way. Of course, to reduce the knee pain, um, we want to know, is it due to osteoarthritis? If it's due to osteoarthritis, there's uh, some inflammation, uh, reaction, and anti-inflammatory agent will definitely help. Uh, and you have faster relief. And on top of that, physiotherapy is a supplement. So physiotherapy will uh, relax your muscle, reduce the tension around your knee. So by a combination of medications and physiotherapy, usually it will help reduce the knee pain as well. But physiotherapy alone can reduce, but uh, the effect will be uh, a bit prolonged rather than uh, medication. Okay. Can osteoarthritis affect other parts of the body? Yes, uh, osteoarthritis is actually a, a degeneration changes uh, to the joint. So it only it is not only affecting our knee joint, but commonly affect hip joints, the shoulder joint, our spine. So if there's any cartilage around the joint with movement, this cartilage can have vent tear, can degenerate, and therefore uh, causes osteoarthritis. So yes, yeah, and. Uh, it sometimes depends on the activity. The hands can get osteoarthritis in the small joints and it can cause pain when you use our hands. Is there any other questions? Uh, is PRP injection help to reduce pain? Okay, PRP stands for uh, platelet-rich plasma. It is another type of injection that we can give in, uh, to our knee joint. So, uh, it actually um, involves withdrawing our own blood. We spin it in the machine and we take a portion of our plasma and inject it back to our knee joint. So the purpose of this is to help uh, regenerate the cartilage, help relieve the pain. But of course, uh, some people, they benefit from it. And especially for younger people, PRP definitely uh, is an option. But for elderly people, sometimes it doesn't work as well. So uh, it depends on individual. It's an option, but to relieve pain, I would say uh, it may not be as good. But it's definitely one of the options that we can try. So if there's no other questions, probably we end our presentation. So. Uh, don't mask your pain. Ask uh, a doctor, approach a doctor uh, who can help. Okay, another question just came in by Mr. James. If the back of the knee feels tight, okay, what can be the proper cause? So, uh, as I mentioned just now, the back of the knee pain, if it's just around the knee, uh, it can be due to osteoarthritis, it can be due to the muscles around the knee, but if the pain go all the way up to the back of your thigh, up to the hip, it may be from the spine. So uh, a condition like slip disc can cause pain all the way up down to the leg. So uh, knee pain is usually again localized around the knee. Is there any problem besides the spine problem of leg pain? Yeah, uh, there are actually many causes for leg pain. So we need to know which part of your leg, what are the symptoms, is the pain constant, is the pain sharp, uh, what are the uh, presentations and what are the things that can aggravate your pain. Is it because of the activities, is it uh, at rest, you've experienced a pain even when you are sleeping, when you are lying on the bed. So there are many causes so we need to know what are the conditions when you get this pain and what are the description of your pain is there any associate uh, symptoms like numbness uh yeah so uh, we need to check it out before i can give you a, a, an answer all right if none then uh, i will end my session here thanks for listening and uh, welcome to our next session of our facebook uh, live by island hospital bye bye